And I'm Detective Tyler Smith. I work in uh, the police department in the cybercrime unit. So at the police department, we have different uh, sections that are underneath uh, the criminal investigations division. So I'm actually assigned to the forensic services unit uh, in that that I will. So we I go out and do crime scenes as well, but I try to tend to go more toward the digital side of things. If it involves a telephone, if it involves the internet, uh, if it involves a computer, generally I'm going to try to help work that case. And so as everybody knows nowadays, you know everything is involving a computer or a cell phone. There's no crime that occurs. I don't think any more in, in 2019 that doesn't involve some element of a telephone for a communication to other people or the internet to pull off some type of fraud or something like that. So kind of one of the biggest trends that we've been seeing and we hope to get ahead of is this whole uh, idea of elderly people being taken advantage of or people in general being taken advantage of uh, with online and cyber fraud. Uh, how many people work hard for the money that they have? <laughs> and how many people like to keep the money that they worked hard for? And so that's what I'm here to help you today is to understand kind of what we're seeing and then that way you can know for yourself and also for your family members and your friends and colleagues and everybody else to let them know if, if you hear some of what I'm talking about today, all of a sudden they start saying something similar then you can say, hey, I think if you might be a victim of a fraud, please go with me to, you know, to the police department and talk to somebody like me or somebody else in the fraud department that can actually help you decide whether or not you're being taken advantage of. Uh, the old adage, if it's too good to be true, it probably is, and, and that goes a long way, but a lot of the reason why we see a lot of the elderly people getting taken advantage of is because technology is new for us. Uh, technology hasn't been around our whole entire lives and a lot of times people don't know the difference between a Facebook Messenger and a iMessage on your telephone. People don't know the difference between you know when somebody's calling me on Facebook and somebody's calling me on my telephone and those things get really complicated for the older people um, and it makes them easy to take advantage of. So I kind of go over one of the I'll just kind of go through some different fraud scenarios that I've seen occur over the past few years as I kind of talk and remember these. I'm not going to bore you to death with a PowerPoint, um, but I'll kind of talk about some different cases that we've seen and how these frauds could have been prevented. So I had a lady um, that went to the local uh, convenience store and was buying a whole lot of gift cards. And every, the people at the store became suspicious that she was going and buying a whole bunch of gift cards all the time. Ended up that she was buying these gift cards because she thought that she had won a lottery. And to pay for the lottery, she would have to buy these gift cards. And so what happened was um, she believed that there was this lottery that was set up for disabled people by Donald Trump. And she was being told this by somebody she thought uh, worked at Facebook and that the Facebook person uh, had told her that this program was set up by Donald Trump and that if he would just, or she would just send this money over uh, with gift cards, that they would be eligible for the program. And so kind of how this worked was that the Facebook person wasn't real, but trying to convince somebody who's already spent twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 that this isn't real is a problem. Because it what's another two or three thousand when you've already spent twenty or thirty thousand, and so you're kind of at that point you're hooked and you're like, well, if it's not true, then I lose thirty thousand dollars. If it is true, then I could win millions, and that's kind of kind of what happens in these situations. So they kind of get somebody on the hook for a little bit of money, and they think that they're just going to keep milking it and milking it and milking it, and there's always some excuse why the money isn't coming. All right, so in, the, in this situation, Zuckerberg, uh, who's Mark Zuckerberg's the president or the CEO of Facebook, he was supposed to fly into the Murfreesboro airport on a plane. That's what this person believed. Of course, it never happened, but yet there was an excuse every single time on why the plane couldn't make it. There was some kind of car crash. There was some kind of engine failure. There was some excuse why the person never, ever came. And in every online fraud, there'll be an excuse on why the person never comes. 
So uh, that situation just kind of keeps compounding and compounding. And then um, she, I guess, gets mad that, that this money's not coming. And so she stops talking to that fraudster. Well, then what will happen is somebody else will, will play a new role and reach out and say, hey, I know you lost your money to that Facebook person, but I'm with the FBI. And I'll help you get your money back from that mean person, but only if you pay me a certain amount in gift cards. And so then she goes back to the store again, buys more gift cards, and sends them over again because she thinks, okay, so now this person's really going to help me. And then the process just keeps going and going and going, and she gets mad at that one, and then, you know, somebody else, you know, steps in. So on Facebook, a lot of times we see, you know, what we call cloned accounts. Uh, somebody will take a profile that is somebody that you might have went to high school with, and you know that person, and you see their picture, and you recognize them, and whenever you have a conversation on Facebook Messenger with this person that reaches out to you, it'll sound like somebody that you went to school with. They'll say, hey, do you, you know, do you remember me? And you'll say, oh yes, I remember you from, you know, say Riverdale High School. Oh, okay, yeah, you, I was in the class of whatever, what class were you in? You know, they'll have this whole big conversation and you'll think you know this person. Well, before long, they'll start asking you, hey, have you heard about this, uh, about this sweepstakes? And so, no, I haven't heard about it, please tell me. And then sure enough, they'll tell you if you send, you know, if you want to win this amount of money, you got to send, you know, this money to this other person, and then you'll be eligible to get all this money back. Sounds too good to be true. It is. But yet, I've sat there and had these conversations with people on Facebook myself. I'll see a cloned account. I know it's not, you know, my friend's account. I know it's somebody else. And so, yeah, I'll respond to the messages, and I'll just keep playing with them until, you know, finally they tell me where to send, you know, the money to, and then, you know, I know what they're doing. So you think, okay, easy enough. Why don't we just go and arrest that person that I'm sending the money to? Because obviously that's the bad guy, right? Well, it's not the bad guy at all. Because what they do is they have people what they call money mules. They're intermediaries in this fraud scheme. And so it'll be people like you guys that think that you're working from home doing a legitimate business. You know, maybe you're a part of an investment strategy or maybe you're doing something, you know, you're, you're a money reshipper, or maybe you think you're working in some kind of financial industry, okay? And so these people will go out on Facebook, recruit people like you and I that think that we're doing something. They'll ask us, hey, if I send you a check, will you, you know, and I'll give you a portion of that check, and then you send it to the next person. And then this happens, and there's all these people in between until the money gets back to the foreign country that most of these people are from. So consistently we see Nigeria, West Africa uh, used most in these scams. Jamaica used to be really popular, but that's what we see. So you can't just go to Texas and arrest you know, John Smith because John Smith is only the middle person for the person that you want that's back in Nigeria. And so a lot of people get frustrated with the police department. Well, why can't you get my money back? Or why can't you go arrest this person? Or why shouldn't you go arrest this one? It's because they're people just like you and me that are in the middle of this funneling process to get the money back out to these foreign countries. And, and we see it time and time again. So that's just what I kind of wanted to talk about is if, if, if you're getting some type of communications over Facebook Messenger, and you think it's somebody that you know, hang, you know, stop talking to them there, pick up the phone and call them. You know, so, you know, hey, can I talk to you in person? Because most of these fraudsters will never, ever, ever answer the telephone. It, consistently in all my investigations, I'll ask the people, have you heard from, you know, have you ever talked to them on the phone? And they'll say, no, I've never talked to them. I tried to call them one time and they hung up on me. They always wanna communicate over text message or Facebook Messenger because they don't speak good English. And you would pick up on that if you were to talk to them, you'd say, hey, they sound foreign. So that's another situation. Uh, romance scams are something that we see a lot of. If somebody thinks that they're in an online relationship with somebody overseas, or even somebody in the United States, uh, romance scams is a big problem. Um, I've, there's a really good article I saw the New York Times put out where they actually followed the romance scam all the way back to Nigeria 
and they had this group called the Yahoo Boys. And the Yahoo Boys and kind of everybody that they work with or that takes on that mentality, they're actually a, basically a group of people who have learned these tactics. And I think the most unsettling thing I learned in this is that they'll actually go to Facebook groups that are set up for widows and widowers, and they will recruit people or, or take advantage of people there. So they know that somebody recently lost a loved one, that they're feeling lonely, and so they'll befriend them. And then before you know it, you know, they're asking them for money, they're claiming to be a member of the military overseas that needs money to get back home, those type of things. And you'll consistently see, you know, those things people being taken advantage of. So on the internet, you can be anybody that you want to be, and so can the fraudsters. They can be your, you know, your kid, they can be, you know, somebody from overseas, they could be a member of the military, they could be a member of the FBI. All they got to do is make a profile up that says they are what you think they are, and a lot of people will believe it. And, and that's where we see a lot of the frauds come from. Um, telephone frauds, you know, we still see some of those kind of things happening, uh, for especially people that, you know, sit at home and they're, they're expecting phone calls from family and friends to check on them throughout the day and they'll consistently get telephone calls uh, from people that are trying to let them know they won a lottery or they owe taxes or something like that. Um, getting to the taxes and the bond scams and those kind of grand jury scams. Has everybody heard of those kind of things that have happened? We've tried to get the word out and the sheriff's office uh, does a lot of that type of work too. Uh, but be careful if you get a call that says that your utility bill is about to be shut off, that you missed grand jury, that you owe a bond for somebody, or all these kind of scams, okay? They're consistently the, the same kind of scam, but what they'll tell you is um, that I'm so-and-so from Middle Tennessee Electric Company. If you don't pay your electric bill right now, it's gonna be shut off in you know 30 minutes. And, oh, you know, how can I pay it? Well, what we need you to do is go down to the local drugstore, buy us a gift card, and then send us the picture on the, or give us the number on the back of that gift card, and we'll keep your electric turned on. Well, everybody knows that the Mercer Electric Company doesn't want gift cards. These people in foreign <laughs> countries, they want the gift cards because they can resell them for, you know, their currency. And that's what they see. But we see businesses getting hit a lot with that type of thing. Uh, they'll call major businesses in town. They'll act like they're the CEO. They'll tell them to send the gift cards to different places. We see this often. Um, another fraud scam that I saw and is when somebody got a call that their grandson had actually been arrested in New York City. And please, please, please don't tell his parents that he's been arrested, but he needs your help. And what we need you to do is take $10,000 in cash for his bond, put it inside of a FedEx envelope, and send it to New York. And the people fell for it. Luckily, they called very soon. They called the very next day, or right after they sent the money out, they called the police, and then I was able to get their package stopped and get their money back. So that's like Sergeant Norville said, it's very important that you call us as soon as you know something happened. As soon as you think that there's a fraud has happened to you, call us because we may be able to reverse that wire transfer. We may be able to call FedEx or UPS or uh, the Postal Service and have them stop that package. But if it goes on for three or four days after you sent that money, the wires are gone, the money's already been delivered, there's no way that, that we can help you get your money back. So. Um, a lot of the deals with reporting is don't feel like, you know, that we're going to go tell your family and they're going to take away your bank account. It may be good that your family knows, but it's not our place to go and tell them. So whatever you report to the police essentially is confidential besides what gets, you know, released in them, you know, maybe by the newspaper or those kind of things. But we do our best to limit what kind of thing gets out. We ask our patrol officers to keep reports very, very brief. And especially if you come to us, and you make that fraud report and ask to speak to detective in the lobby of the police department, we'll do everything we can to keep the report brief and to keep your personal information out of the newspaper as best as we can. Um, so that's the biggest thing is to let us know if you think that a fraud is occurring 
come to the police department, talk to us. If something's too good to be true, if you're getting these phone calls or you have a friend that's, you know, on, in an online relationship with somebody they've met, never met in real life and those kind of things, please, please, please reach out to us and let us know how we can help you. A lot of times it's, it's difficult to be in our position because we can see it, you know, but the person, you know, that's being taken advantage of kind of has that rose colored glasses on. You know, they see that, um, you know, things, you know, they, they think they're in love, they think they finally met somebody, you know, they're lonely and now they're not lonely and they have rose colored glasses, but yet that gets them taken advantage of really, really bad. So if you try to tell somebody, hey, that person's not real, stop talking to them then you know then they're like well they've already invested so much time and so much money and you know all this energy and love and effort into a relationship and you're sitting there telling them that it's a lie and to convince people that is is really really difficult so i brought uh, these little pamphlets today these little brochures for everybody uh, we'll kind of briefly go through those and make sure that i've kind of touched on all the little different points and all the little frauds we have plenty of extras. So if you want to take them, give them to family member, friends, people at church. Feel free to make copies. Uh, nothing on here is, you know, anything that you can't copy and share with everybody. So we know that not everybody can be here today, but with you guys being in the community, you can help get the word out. Okay. So some of the warning signs are if something sounds too good to be true, they pressure you to do something right now. They guarantee it's success. You know, with no lottery that you ever play, there's guaranteed to win. But if these people tell you, if you pay $1,000, we guarantee you'll win 10000 that's not a true lottery. Uh, they promise unusually high returns. They require an upfront investment. Uh, they want to overpay you for an item and send the difference. Um, if anybody sells anything on Craigslist or uh, Facebook Marketplace or OfferUp or any of those type of services, that's a really big scam that we see is, hey, I know that you want 10000 for your truck. However, I want to pay you 30000 in a check. And then whenever you get that check, send the 20000 to us. Well, what they do is they'll send a fraudulent check for $30,000. You'll send $20,000 of it back to them, and then the check will bounce a couple days later, and then your, your bank account goes negative $20,000. Okay? Um, it doesn't have the look of a real business or something just doesn't feel right. That's the biggest thing. You guys have been around for a number of years. You know what's right and what isn't right. If it doesn't feel right, stop, talk to somebody, talk to a family member. You know, don't, don't hesitate to hang up the phone. If you get that call from the electric company or you get that call from the sheriff's office threatening that you're going to go to jail, hang up the phone, call a family member, and then decide what the right thing to do is. Maybe it's to drive to the jail yourself, or maybe it's to drive to the electric company yourself. But whatever you do, don't stay on the phone. I would say that 10 out of 10 times in this, if, if they're directing them to go out and buy gift cards, they're keeping them on the phone the whole entire time. Even when they're at the checkout line, they're on the phone with them the entire time. The reason they do that is to keep you from calling somebody else or to keep you from asking the clerk or to keep somebody else from intervening. If they can keep you on that phone and you talk to them, then they can reassure you what's gonna happen. So a lot of times what they'll do is they'll tell you, well, I need you to go buy these gift cards and take them to the electric company. Well, then after you go and buy the gift cards, they say, oh, no, no, the electric company just closed for an emergency, give us the numbers instead. You laugh, but it happens. Um, as far as online stuff goes, never click on a link inside an email or visit a website if you didn't expect that link. So a lot of times we'll see that. Um, if you have any doubts about the business, verify it with the uh, Better Business Bureau and uh, shred confidential documents instead of just putting them in the trash. Okay. So some fraud facts is your bank will never email you or call you for your account number. The bank already has your account number. They don't need you to provide that to them. Uh, don't wire money to people that you don't know. Wiring money is really, really popular uh, among fraudsters, but not really popular in the real world. If I need to give somebody money for something, I just take them a check or I just you know pay them with a credit card or whatever I need to do. 
rarely in the real world outside of business, maybe real estate, loan transfers, that type of thing, there's not a whole lot of reason for you and I to be wiring money. And so if you're wiring money, stop and ask, hey, who am I really wiring this money to? And is this a legitimate thing? And even if you have questions, ask to talk to the bank manager or somebody like that and ask them, say, hey, you know, so-and-so, you know, asked me to, you know, to wire them some money for this business venture. What do you think? And hopefully they can, you know, they can help you. I've actually been in the bank before when the tellers have told people, stop, don't do that. That's a fraud. And as long as you're willing to listen and remember the conversation that we had today, they can help you. But if you persist that you know what it is and they're not keeping you from doing it, then you're, you're apt to lose quite a bit of money. And whenever I say quite a bit, I've had people lose $300,000. I've had people lose several, several hundred thousand dollars. A uh, gentleman that I work with, his grandpa, he lost about three to 400,000, I think, in a lottery scam. So it can happen to us, it can happen to our family, it can happen to you. So um, foreign lotteries are illegal in the US, you can't win no matter what they say. Check your monthly bank statements for charges that you don't recognize. That's very important. Uh, to always check those bank statements. I've seen situations before where the banks will come back and say, well, you've received these bank statements or you've checked your balance online. We're not gonna be able to refund you that money because you should have saw that that was happening. If you catch it within a month or two months, then most likely they'll refund you some of those charges as long as they can. If it was a fraudulent check or a fraudulent credit card charge, something like that, they can refund those. If it's a wire transfer, they can't but definitely be sure to always check your bank statements and check your credit report every year. You don't have to pay for a credit report. There's free ones available, annualcreditreport.com. I would just suggest you don't check them all at one time. So there's three different credit bureaus. There's a TransUnion, Experian, and Equifax. Check those at three different times throughout the year. Maybe check one midsummer, maybe check one you know, around Christmas time, and then you know, either the fall or the spring, you know, check the other one. That way you kind of get a consistent feel of what's being put on your credit. Um, we see a lot of frauds like that where people actually use somebody else's credit to buy a cell phone in a store, and then they'll bill that cell phone to that person's credit, and they'll walk out the door with the phone. And so if you're not checking your credit report, oftentimes you may not know that you have an account at Verizon that's delinquent, or that you have a credit card from Coals that you never knew about. So be sure and always check your credit report. Um, and take an active interest in the financial activities of your aging parents and your friends. So definitely don't, don't, I know nobody wants to get in anybody's business about money. I know that. I know that with my, my family, my grandparents, I mean, we don't want to ask, you know, what's your money situation like, but definitely do take an active interest in you know, sharing your financial situation with your children or, you know, with some of your friends. You know, you ain't got to go into specifics, but at least, you know, have that conversation about this. You don't want to wait till somebody loses, you know, a whole lot of their life savings before we, before we have the talk. Okay. Um, so on this back side of this never tab, it says never cash a check or for money or for money that you didn't expect to earn or send the money elsewhere. We see that one happen quite a bit where somebody will get a check in the mail. They'll go and deposit that check and think, you know, that the check's good. Even if it's a cashier's check nowadays, those are being uh, fraudulent. So I'll never cash a check if you didn't earn the money or you weren't expecting it or it wasn't like a friend for a birthday kind of thing. You know, always don't go cash that check. Or if you do cash the check, you know, check with the bank and make sure that there's no way that that money could could be returned. So wait 14 days, wait 30 days, whatever, to make sure that, that the money's not going to get returned. Um, never talk to people online that you've never met in real life. And even if you think you're talking to somebody you have met in real life, maybe you know, stop talking to them online and talk to them on the phone or say, hey, let's meet up. Um, never send prepaid gift cards, Amazon cards, iTunes cards, or photos of those cards as payment for anything including taxes, lottery winnings, military members stuck overseas, an online lover, to get a family member out of jail, to keep from being arrested, or to keep someone from telling your secret. So everybody kind of hangs up on that last line, 
but uh, Sergeant Norville was actually a victim of, or they tried to make her a victim of this and said, well, if you don't pay us so much in Bitcoin that we're going to tell everybody what we found on your computer. Well, there's nothing on her computer, but she thinks maybe in the back of her mind that they have found something. And so then, you know, they're threatening to basically extort her. If you don't pay to send us the money that we're going to, you know, we're going to tell everybody. So everybody's got something in their life that, you know, they don't want everybody knowing. And if somebody says, hey, I'm going to tell that secret that you have unless you pay me $10,000, some people might pay that $10,000 to keep that secret from being out there. So never do that. We call those, uh, I forget what the name of those scams are. It will come to me. Uh, revenge scams, I think is what, what we call those. So always, uh, on this other tab here, always contact the police department if you think uh, something may be fraud. Uh, hang up the phone with scammers. Uh, scammers keep you up on the phone to keep you from getting advice and threaten you. If you hang up, you'll be arrested. Uh, number three says ask a trusted friend or family member if they think it's a scam. That's always good to get somebody else's opinion. Somebody kind of not in the heat of the moment, somebody not in love, somebody not uh, thinking they're going to be the next, you know, multimillionaire. So ask somebody else, get their opinion. Uh, discuss scams with the mentally disabled, retired or elderly people and make sure they aren't being victimized. And always report the incident to police. Don't be ashamed. I've sat there across the table just like this from many, many, many people who felt really ashamed and dumb and everything else for what they did. But, you know, we don't judge you for it. We just try to help you get out of it. And so whatever we could do makes it makes a big difference and keep you from losing any more of your money and help determine what we need to do uh, to maybe uh, fix your credit or to help you provide you some resources to determine what all has been done and what we can help you do to undo those type of things.